Hey, 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 uh, hey, Nemo. Um, do you need help finding your dad? Yes. I'm hey, not. hey, Nemo. Um, do you need help finding your dad? Yes, I'm lost. Hey, what's your name? Nemo. Nemo, do you need help finding your dad? Yes, isn't that what the whole movie's about? Nemo, do you, do you need help finding your dad? Come on, why, why do you keep avoiding the question? Yes, I said yes. Oh, okay, now you've said the answer. God, so disrespectful. Fuck. Are you supposed to be like Dory or something? Yeah, I'm Dory, it's my name. I thought Dory was a good Mario. What? Okay, that's enough of that. Um, Tarantino. Quentin motherfucking Tarantino. Uh-huh. What do we think? He's my favorite director. I'll give you that. Better than Martin Scorsese? Yes. Have you watched any Scorsese films? Probably, I just can't name them. The two that come to mind whenever I think of Martin Scorsese, um, The Departed, okay. and um, The Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. Those are some two notable ones. You ever seen The Departed? No. Oh my god! Okay. Sui, the one thing that you can take from this this, this conversation mm -hmm. that will better your life in mm -hmm. every aspect mm -hmm. is watching The Fucking Departed. What is it? Holy fucking shit. It's fucking amazing. Leo. Okay, I've, Matt Damon. I've heard about it. Uh-huh. Leo mm -hmm. is a... A uh, person working in, um, fuck, I'm forgetting the, the basic of the character plot. But all I know is that the twist at the end made me shit my fucking pants. Okay, well, don't tell me anymore. I'm not going to. Just watch it. Anybody at home watching that needs a fucking fantastic two and a half hours of their life that they'll never forget. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Oh, who the fuck is the mob boss? Um... I think it's, I think Robert De Niro's, no, it's not fucking Robert De Niro. I'm fucking special, okay? I can't remember things. I'm like Dory. God damn it. Alright. I have short-term memory loss. Okay. Why is Quentin the best director? Okay. I feel like he's the best because his style is so unique. Oh. Sorry for the brief interruption. But um, my sister came up asking if we I wanted to watch Cheers, which I heavily recommend to anybody listening. Cheers, it's better than The Office. At me, fuck you. Um, so why is Quentin Tarantino the best right now? So I really feel like it comes down to his style, and I don't. I feel very conflicted with this because you have movies like Reservoir Dogs, which is his first movie. Which is kind of like... Okay, so basically what I want to say is Tarantino's style is super long scenes with very deep conversations mm -hmm. and also scenes with like a ton of violence, mm -hmm. but very stylized violence. Yes. Um, so I want to say like Reservoir Dogs... Oh my god, I'm thinking... <laughs> when you said stylized violence, uh -huh. this is the ending scene of Hollywood came into yeah. my mind. <laughs> like, that shit that just never leaves your brain. Oh my god. But yeah, like, I feel like Reservoir Dogs is a good movie, but it doesn't really fit his style, because it's... Because he's still kind of figuring it out. Yeah. But like, Pulp Fiction, I think it was his second movie. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's just like the perfect combination of like, violence and like, long, deep conversations yeah. that you just like... You think about yeah. for a long time. Uh huh. And like, there's so many cultural references. Mm -hmm. and it's like, uh, I. He blends genres of movies. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. And like, like, that's an action crime. Mm -hmm. You know, not crime, but like action, thriller, cop. You, you could go like, how do you call pulp? What do you what do you describe Pulp Fiction as as a movie? How do you how do you describe that? How do you? Uh, someone's like, I've never heard of this movie. What's it about? You say it's a cop movie? No. <laughs> you say it's like, what do you say? I don't even know what you call it. It's <laughs> so unique. It's like... it's He has his own genre. Straight up. And he creates worlds like... Like, like you can like go into the world of Pulp Fiction, and like which is like Hollywood and like that time. And like, like the big like 
what's his name? Marcellus Wileyer or yeah, Wallace, Marcellus Wallace. And like you oh, yeah, kind of get Wallace. into that world where like a bunch of crime and like hitmen and stuff like with that. With the with the Bruce Willis little plot yes. line. Oh my god. It's like it's it's so good. Like how like how like but why is it good? Why does all these elements that kind of tie into each other? Why are they so goddamn good? It's so hard to explain because like I just like I love it so much, but like I feel like it's because of the characters he creates and the world around them. Like you have like like uh, keep going, keep going. Sorry. You have movies like I'm gonna take another example of, like Wolf of Wall Street, which mm-hmm. you were talking about before. Where it's like you kind of get into that world where like they do a bunch of drugs and mm-hmm. a bunch of illegal stuff, and you kind of get into that world where it's like that would never happen in like our day. Like, it did. It was real. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> about, like you and me right now. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, sure. n- that's never gonna happen with us. Like, I mean, it might. <laughs> I, don't know, like, I was doing super illegal stuff, and you kind of like Tarantino does a lot of that. Where like Samuel L. Jackson, um, John Travolta, or I forget. Oh yeah, John Travolta. Yeah, um, but like you would never see like some like hit men doing the dirty work for their boss, uh-huh. and like them talking about like the randomest stuff ever. Like, <laughs> you would never. Imagine. Hey, why do they call it? What do they call a quarter pounder with cheese in? <laughs> what the fuck did he say? In Sweden, France. In France, what do they call a quarter pounder with cheese in France? Uh, oh, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> I, I, I can't cite it word for word, but he's just like, they call it a quota. Because like, he's like, the, 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 they use the metric, metric system over system, there. Yeah. So what do they call it? I don't know. I don't know. I can, like, the way that like, you see his mind, you see yeah. Tarantino wrote this, mm-hmm. and like you can see his thought process through this. You're like, this motherfucker really sat in like a writing room, or like by himself, writing this fucking script, uh-huh. being like, what the, why the fuck do they call a quarter pound of a cheese, a quarter pound of a cheese in France? Mm-hmm. And you're just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that's like part of the genius of Tarantino is that you don't expect what he's going to do. Yeah, right the unexpected. Mm-hmm. It's pure. It was very pure. That's why I think Hollywood was probably one of his best movies that ever. That is like a classic. Because you watch that for the first time, Mm-hmm. You just like you'll just never forget it. Yeah. Like and the fact of like with uh, here spoiler alert with the Sharon Tate murder, yeah. where like if so, how do you explain that movie to someone? What's what's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood about? I would say it's, it's about the Sharon Tate murder. It's yeah. about Charles Manson and the Sharon Tate but murder. It's really no, not it's not. <laughs> it's, not. <laughs> it's about the characters and the world they're in. Mm-hmm. And like I feel like the thing is that everyone always thinks that like movies have to have like this plot that goes from A to B. Yeah. And like in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it's there's kind of, oh it's my god, all over the place. It's like, so fucking like, and, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a bad thing. Yeah. A lot of people like when they're watching this movie, they're like, this is not like the social norm. I don't like this. Therefore, yeah. therefore, like if he did not follow what movies should be. Mm-hmm. Therefore, this is not a good movie. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Tarantino's like, fuck you. I'll create a 20 minute backstory on yeah. Bruce Lee and Brad Pitt yeah, <laughs> on a scene, scene. And, and it's just gonna be there. It's never gonna be mentioned through the whole movie, but it's gonna explain this one piece of dialogue yeah. that happened. That's it. Uh-huh. Boom. Fuck you. I can do that. Because it's my movie. And I feel like you, <laughs> you really have to like Tarantino. Yeah, in order I to agree. Enjoy his movies, because like, uh-huh. there's like scenes in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where like, they're just like talking for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, my my sister was so bored. Yeah. She was so bored. So it was my sister, and my mom, and at the end of the movie, my mom and my sister came out like, what was the point of that? Yeah, they're like, why did I just watch that? Like, what the fuck? And then you. As a movie like lover, mm-hmm. and you you understand how much of a movie lover Tarantino is. Yeah. That's where it all stems from. The passion from me, for me. If you see somebody mm-hmm. with this amount of passion, mm-hmm. like the art that is created out of that passion is just pure. Mm-hmm. It's so pure. When and he, if you you ever watch an interview with him? Oh yeah, for sure, bro. I fucking love his interviews when he's talking about like. 
You could lose any movie in the world, mm -hmm. and he'd fucking know it. And I forgot what I was talking about. It was an interview. I You said something, and I, I thought about it. And it was an interview that I thought about something that he said. And, um... Made me think about this one thing he said. Mm, let me pause it. Actually, there's this interview where um, he there's a reporter and he's talking about the violence of his movies and how that like, mm -hmm. affects um, society and stuff. And like you can see like how passionate he is about his stuff and like when people critique, yes. it, he's like, you know what? Screw you, like. I don't care whatever the movie <laughs> yeah, says. Yeah, dude. Crit I'm, I'm going to do this. and I'm Critics mean nothing to him. No. His movie is his movie. If enough people think your work is genius, mm -hmm. maybe it's not genius to everybody else, but you know what? If it made somebody think that you are a movie genius, mm -hmm. then you know what? It is. It if it is to one person, and it is to a bunch of people, and it is to you, mm -hmm. the creator... I feel like that's all that matters. That's really all that matters. I wrote this in my essay. I said, um, I think commercialism kills art. I think the fact of the matter is that if you are putting your whole into something mm -hmm. and it's good and people like it, they, 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 they hunger for more. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I'll, I'll use an example. Lil Uzi Vert, right? Mm -hmm. His last album, fucking God. All right? But people aren't happy enough with that. The, he has this discography of just fantastic music that represents his life and just his 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 rage and his just like hype. It's hype music because he's hype while he's making it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you feel that. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, that's not good enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. They want more. They're like, when are you going to release your next project? Give us your next project. Give us, give us, give us, give us more, 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 more. And even if his, his next project, obviously it's going to be fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. Because he can't make bad music. But it's like, but it's like, what if it's different, you know? People mm -hmm. are going to be pissed at him. People are like, what if he fucking, he went and he dropped like a, 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 uh, an album full of tracks that are just like, him whispering, like, uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, with like words strewn over it. Can we go into rap, actually? Yeah, to most about. definitely, most definitely. Um, well, hold on, let me finish the point. Okay. Keep your point. Um, the point is, um, money. It all goes back to money. You want to put you you. We need money. Mm -hmm. We all need money. Lil Uzi, he needs money. Yep. Like he needs money to to buy stuff, to buy diamonds, to buy clothes, to buy houses, to buy cars. You know, mm -hmm. he needs money. So, in order to need to get money, mm -hmm. you need to create something that the public will buy. Mm -hmm. And there's a fine line between what the public wants mm -hmm. versus what you want to give the public. There's a fine line there, you know? And if your, your what you want doesn't always match up with the public's, mm -hmm. then you get flack. You get shit for it. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing I saw with Trippy Red, bro. He tried to create like a separate, like a separate genre album mm -hmm. that was just like his own genre, and people were like, "This is fucking garbage," you know. Yeah. And even like to the, to the public, like to me, like I don't know, I'm not gonna listen to it again, you know, because it was it was like whatever, like it was a forgettable album. Mm -hmm. But like to him, he put his fucking heart and soul into that, you know, and tried to do something different. Same thing with Childish Gambino. Mm -hmm. He he took his whole career of a rapper, being a rapper, and he was like, no. I'm going to make the greatest R&B soul album yeah. that I possibly can. I'm mm -hmm. going to put my heart and soul into this album, to the instruments, to the production, to, to my voice. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to change my style, and I'm going to make it what I want. Mm -hmm. And people were like, fuck you, give us a rap album. Fuck you, Childish Gambino. We're going to call you Donald Glover now because you're a fucking singer or whatever. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. And people were pissed, you know? Yeah. But then the true fans, this goes back to being a true fan. If you're a true fan, I feel like you have to love, you, I mean, you don't have to, but I feel like if you are a true fan, you love what that artist produces, rain or shine, you know? Um, well, I feel like there's always going to be a market for the type of genre you're trying to push, like with Childish Gambino. Mm -hmm. like, there is a lot of people that did enjoy his album. But they weren't his original fan exactly. base. Exactly, you know? and that's the point, is that... He, he, he broadened his horizons. Yeah, and sometimes you're going to have to burn bridges in order to get there. Uh -huh. It's part of life. Yeah. you got to burn bridges to get up to other places. Yeah. Just kidding, that's not how bridges work. 
<laughs> you gotta build bridges to get to new places. But I guess in building the new bridge, uh -huh. the other bridge gets set on fire. Nope. And if I could go back to that point of like being yourself and doing whatever you want and not caring what other people think. You gotta have thick skin, man. You can't let society dictate your life. So I You dictate your life. So I think that's very similar to what Drake has done. Okay. And actually, I feel like... Letting society dictate his life or dictate his own life? I feel like, yeah, it's kind of the opposite. Like, initially when he started... Which one? What do you mean? The opposite of what? Oh, I'm saying that he started off doing his own thing. Uh -huh. And then he kind of came into this, oh, generic rap, hip-hop. Yeah. Because he, so he figured out how to sell it. Exactly. So yeah. I, I remember what I said. I initially started liking Drake. Mm -hmm. I remember and walking home with you during middle school. You fucking bumping your Drake shit. Yeah. Totally. And it was because it was kind of unique. It was different from what rap and hip hop was all about. Like, um, Thank Me Later was a great album. Mm -hmm. Take Care. Take Care. Take so fucking good. Okay. Holy shit. And it's like so, <laughs> it's so good. It's so unique. And you know, like when you listen to it, you know, all right, that's Drake. That's Drake. But now, but now he's a different person. Now, what, like, Scorpion? I listened to, like, one song on Scorpion. They're pop. They're pop songs. It's like... It's not rap. It's pop rap. I don't know. And he's just, He's like, always been pop rap, though. Well, yeah. He's always understood how to make hits, you know? Yeah, but I feel like you have songs like Marvin's Room. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I feel like that's such a masterpiece. Mm hmm And it's, like, it's so different than what you would hear today, though. It's totally. Like, it's so slow... But at the same time, I feel like it's so powerful, and especially with, like, the uh, the voice of the woman coming in, mm -hmm. and when she's on the call and stuff like that, I'm like, you would never hear that today. No, never, bro. And, I, it's, and it's not that he doesn't l lack the emotional, like, depth to do that, it's that he, it's just not him anymore. Yeah. It sucks, because he, like, he's trying to cater to, like, everyone. And he's you kinda, can't. He's lost can't. touch. Because guess what? Now he's not catering to us. So fuck him. Exactly. Fuck him. Well, and... Okay, you keep going. I'll rant on in a second. Well, I don't even like hip-hop anymore. Or okay. rap or whatever. What changed that for you? Um, Part of it was Drake. Because Drake was like my main staple of music. Right. In middle school. Um, and then I tried to broaden out. I like Gambino. Mm -hmm. um, Migos. It's kind of basic rap. And I didn't really like that too much. It's not basic. Those people made fucking... Alright. Migos made, like, genre-bending hip-hop. They made mm -hmm. trap music pop. Like, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna, like, kind of dig on rap for a little bit. Alright, go for it. And I know you like rap Go a lot. for it, bro. Don't worry about me. I just feel like... I'm my own person. <sighs> and I know I'm being a hypocrite when I say that because, like... Because you like Drake? Well, yeah, but, like, more in a sense because, like, every genre, like... The lyrics of the songs are kind of, like, similar throughout the genre. Like, you go to rap and it's, like, about a hard life, you know, like, getting through crime and stuff like that. You go to pop and it's, like, love songs and, like, I guess it's... Something that everybody can relate to. Yeah. And, like, I feel like with rap it was, like, too much of the same stuff for me, like... Not just with the lyrics, but, like, the beat as well. And it kind mm -hmm. of got a little boring for me. Yeah. And I moved out. Um, I went sort of to R&B. Like, um, what, you have some artists you could throw out? What was your R&B vibes? Um, really, it was Drake. And Drake is your R&B? No, 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 no. Listen, What the fuck? Okay, keep going, keep going. I wasn't, like, a pure R&B guy. I like okay. just more slow songs and, like... Because Drake has, like, a bunch of slow songs that Do I you like. call slow rap R&B? Is that pretty much what it is? Just beats on slow songs? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay, but like, I felt like it was too slow and like I wanted something more upbeat, but at the same uh -huh. time, I felt like the beat of rap and like, you kind of know that beat, like Migos uses it a lot and it's kind of like, it's just present throughout and I was like, I can't listen to this anymore. So I went to 80s music. Fuck yeah. And How's I, that working out for you? I actually really enjoy it because the like, electronic old vibe of like the piano and like the all the different instruments coming together in a like a very upbeat and like hype way yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel like that's something that i really enjoy i agree yeah. it's some it's some good shit i recommend um daniel caesar's good 
if you like if you're digging some R&B still. Um, Anderson Pack's good. Um, oh, a lot of girls. SZA, SZA is really fucking good. Mm -hmm. uh, her, her is really good. Um, Gold Link, Gold Link's not Gold Link's a rapper, but he's he's got some good jams. Um, that's just me, my take. That's what I listen to. Mm -hmm. I like. Um, okay, before I talk about my own musical love. I'm gonna hate on Drake a little bit. Okay, that's. I love, like, you know, Drake as a whole. Did you listen to his Care Package album that he just dropped this summer? I didn't even know he dropped. Neither it. did I. It was it's like old songs and like okay. blah, blah 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 blah. It's like not like new new work, but it's yeah. like it's like a new thing. It fucking you know it made billboards. Like yeah. it made Apple Music billboards and shit, you know, because he's fucking Drake. Yeah. But the thing is. That he's he was trying to cater to his old fans, you know, like mm -hmm. you. He's true, but like, guess what? We're already turned off because you made a song like fucking Kiki. Do you love me? Oh my god, right? It makes you hate Drake. Listening to a song like that that gets on the radio, and this is the same thing with pop music, you know? When Post Malone made Better Now and that shit was just like over and over again on the radio, I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm over it, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanna go listen to fucking Stoney and fucking smoke pot. Like, this is who I want. Like, literally, dude, if you listen to White Iverson, like, when it came out, mm -hmm. could you fathom that that motherfucker was gonna be on the radio? Yeah. Could you, like, imagine that shit? No. Mm -hmm. I, I I love what I've ever said. Me too. I love the song. It's a fucking awesome song. But could you imagine that becoming this person, this artist, becoming a pop artist? No. Because guess what? He's a household name now, bro. If mm -hmm. you if your songs are on the radio all the time, you, people know who you are. Mhm. Mm it's a fucking trip to me. Didn't you just come out with a new single? He's a, a new single called Circles came out this uh, last Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. and his new album drops, and I'm so excited. I think. Um, if you really are enjoy and like get down with an artist's personality, mm -hmm. which is something that we can do now that we previously couldn't because of social media and for the sure. internet, for sure. I feel if you really relate to the or like you just enjoy the artist's personality, I feel like it makes you like the artist's music more because mm -hmm. you feel like you know him, you feel like you know him or her, and then you like listen to their art that they created and you're like, they made this for me, you know? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Do you prioritize lyrics or like overall sound? Like which one do you find more overall important? sound? Okay. Hundred percent. If a mute like lyrics are a very big big part because mm -hmm. um, it's what the artist is trying to say yeah. and what their their message that they're putting out there. Um, but especially when you get a producer rapper like Kanye, where they create their own sound. Yeah as well as speak over it mm -hmm. that's what i find the best like that whole overall sound is like the most important thing to me mm -hmm. but then again when you get like a, a fucking a rapper like wiz khalifa and they they get like these fire producers they get like fucking um what the fuck's his name cardo you get cardo cardo on the beat mm -hmm. oh my god that guy's drums bro like I feel literally a lot. The producers really create the waves. Mm -hmm. The producers create the the genres. For sure. Like, or they create the the different types of genre. You mm -hmm. know, like Zaytoven. Zaytoven really. You know who that is? No. Dude, he's he's like Gucci Mane's like producer. Mm -hmm. That like Gucci Mane grew up with. I read I read Gucci Mane's autobiography. It's a good read. Oh, Did I talk boy. to you about that? No. Oh my god, it's a good ass read, bro. No, you laugh, but like he's very <laughs> articulate. He spent three years in prison, yeah. um, off of some like st like attempted murder charge. I'm not sure what it was, but he didn't get convicted. But then he did get convicted because of like something, and he went to jail for three years. And to get through it, he wrote a book about his whole life, and the book is amazing. He talked about selling drugs basically he the way he paid for he went to school mm -hmm. but he wasn't really digging it and but he realized he always had this poetic talent mm -hmm. he always had this poetic talent that he liked that he could form words and rhyme them in ways that other people really couldn't and he was like nobody else has this talent like why do i have this talent and so he he rolled with it and he sold crack a lot of crack he trapped out he lived this rapper lifestyle that like was influenced by like 
um, 90s rap, early 2000s rap, and he made it his own genre, or he kind of added on to this wave of like Lil Wayne. He kind of grew, he kind of popped off in the Lil Wayne era. So Lil Wayne kind of paved the way for this 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 uh, this trapper sound. Although Lil Wayne's a little bit more deeper than trap, he kind of has a lot of like good like uh, wordplay, a lot a lot of wordplay for Lil mm-hmm. Wayne. Uh, but for for Gucci, uh, basically with this book, it just really told me a lot about his life. You know, mm-hmm. it fucking just like like I felt like I was growing up with Gucci Mane. Like he there was a lot of stuff that he didn't add and didn't include because it was only like a it was like five and a half hours of audio. I listen to audiobooks a lot. I love me some audiobooks. Mm-hmm. And what he was saying, he was just like, he just gave, like, you could tell, like, when his, his attitude switched. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you could tell he was just trying to grow up. He, he really did a really good, like, um, hindsight piece, you know, on, like, his life. Mm-hmm. And, like, where his morals and values were at. Like, he told you his relationship with his mother at this point. Like, he had very, very broken family bonds. Like, he would even, like, sell out his cousin to, like, get some dough for like mm-hmm. a, a shipment of crack you know mm-hmm. and so like that 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 concept is just like and just like his life and like the, any book where they describe what prison is like have you ever read any prison books bro holy shit Shawshank Redemption like pri- like uh what's that or I know what Shawshank Redemption is but like, I, I, honestly I haven't seen it you haven't seen it's a movie correct it's my favorite movie really yes dude I haven't seen it um, is that my next? Is that my next watch? You should. For sure. You watch The Departed. I'll watch Shawshank Redemption. Okay. We'll meet back here and talk about it. Okay. Got it. Gucci Mane's book though. Uh-huh. Fucking gas. Basically, um, uh, basically he would he would talk about like he he was in prison and he he really talked about a lot of the times when he was in prison he didn't really reflect on why he was in prison but he thought about how much he wanted to like get out. Yeah. And like keep doing shit. You know, prison is a horrible, horrible, horrible system. Yeah. It makes no sense. I also read this book called Pimp, recommended to me by Dave Chappelle, mm-hmm. the comedian. Mm-hmm. And he's in a lot of heat lately. He's in heat because he fucking was like, Michael Jackson is fine. Like you can't believe these guys. They're fucking going just doing it for clout. Okay, come on, fuck off. <laughs> what do you think about that? That's a little iffy for me, but do you know with 100% certainty that these two kids that are now grown up. Right, no. Did not get raped by Michael Jackson. No. Michael Jackson can't defend himself. So it's like, what the fuck? I just feel like it's not the right place to go into. What do you mean? Like in this conversation or in life? In, no, in life. Okay. You kind of just like... <laughs> I don't know. Why would you go into that? Just, into what? Like rape and stuff. Well, that's the thing. Did he rape him? Well, yeah, I did. I don't even think it matters. Did you watch the HBO special? No, I didn't. <laughs> I fucking didn't. I don't want to fucking watch a detailed description of these two boys telling me that they got raped for fucking five years. Yeah. Um, that's that's our entertainment now. <laughs> think think about that. That's our entertainment. News consists of for like a whole month was just like people coming out against sexual assault I, I hated that so much what did it make you feel what do you mean did it make you feel like it was uh like a, a, a manhunt did it make you feel like it was like the salem witch trials and like the communist hunt all over again I, and they were just hunting people out and just c- accusing them and then there was nothing that they could say in response and just outing people without even any proof honestly here here's what i think about like people coming up and like claiming rape and stuff like that claiming rape or claiming they got raped. <laughs> yeah, for I get you, I get you. Um, I feel like a lot of people do it, and they're not, like, totally honest. Because, like... A lot of people come out against it, yeah. and they're not honest about it. But, like, you could... People think that there's, like, a fine line between rape and not rape. Oh, I think if it's rape, it's rape. <laughs> okay, but... Yeah. I think if it's unconsensual anything, it's fucking rape. Okay, fine. But, like, people, like, misinterpret things, and, like... People and then you get the whole alcohol influence, yeah. and that's a whole different horse. And, like, most people, I mean, yeah, like, when they go into that stuff, they're not going to, like, do I have your consent? They're kind I mean, but you're right, but, but they should. They should, but, they like, should. a lot of the times people are just going to go into it because if, like, both people are kind of in that sort of mood. That mind state, that kind of, like, flirtatious attitude. 
Yeah, and I feel like people... But you know how hard it is for, like, a chick to be like, nah, and then a guy be like, yeah, 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 come on, let's do it. And then she'll be like, uh, okay. Like, is that rape? Because, like, she still said okay. I don't think that's rape. You don't think that's rape? I don't. Because the lady consented to it in the end. Yeah, but, like, not willingly. Okay, but she still said it. Yeah, but not willingly. You know how much pressure there is on women, bro? A lot. They can't say no. Look at, like, slapped. Okay, and actually, I want to go back to that, because I think the problem is, is that when people come out against rape, sometimes they're telling the truth, and other times they're not telling the truth. To get moolah. And you don't know when they're telling the truth. <sighs> and it affects... So bad. It affects uh, the people it's really who bad. are actually raped. Yeah. Because you don't know if they're telling the truth or yeah, not. Yeah, and yeah, And they've gone yeah. through this traumatic experience, and you're like... How can Ugh. I be sure? Because it really comes down to... But then it's also like... Women are scared to come out because... Then they'll have people... Like... You just saying like... We don't know if you're telling the truth. Exactly. Like... They have no evidence... But they're telling you that they got raped. Mm -hmm. So who do you believe? Exactly. And it's like the boy who cried wolf. Yeah, total blue. Total boy who cried wolf. It's very toxic. We live yeah. in a toxic world. Yep. Very toxic. Not a fan. So that's why I don't like all these people coming out. Yeah. Because great. there's no way all. What of do you think about the Aziz Ansari thing? Hmm. The what? Aziz Ansari. Where's that? All right, we won't go into that. But that's another issue with um. You know who? The, you, did you watch Parks and Rec? No. Okay, whatever. You're uncultured. Basically, this actor Aziz Ansari. He has his own show on Netflix. It's called Master of None. Mm -hmm. Fantastic show. You should watch it. Um. Uh, he, a, a girl that worked on set with him said that he, like, said stuff to her. Mm -hmm. Like, sexually harassed her. Mm -hmm. Like, catcalled her. Mm -hmm. I believe there might have been some touching involved. Like, some butt touch, maybe. I don't know. I'm not too clear on the details. I just read, like, a news article on it, like most everybody else did. But, the point is, like... Where do you draw the line into where if a woman if a woman feels that this is bad and it's not okay, where do you draw the line to where a dude has to say okay and backs off? Like why don't we protect the women more in no, general? We should. We should. But we have like these roles set in place where like the male is the overarching dominant authority, and he kind of has the say. Okay. And, um, yeah, and I feel like what you said, it's hard for women to say, like, no. Yeah, it really is, bro. Uh -huh. It really, really, really is. Well, like, how do you stop that? You tell, you teach men. You educate them. You say, hey, if a woman says stop, you fucking stop. Mm-hmm. I guess. It's hard. It's tricky. It's very multifaceted. Yeah. Many, many different sides and opinions. But at the end of the day, these women still have to live with this for the rest of their lives. This, 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 um, unpredictable world. Mm -hmm. This, um, this trauma. This state of being lesser. And I'm not saying that to be cruel, but... You don't really hear many stories of men being raped by women. And that's why I'm saying lesser. Like, having a lesser ability to defend themselves, you know? Yeah. Not like lesser as a whole. It's tricky for us to talk about it, too. Because neither of us are women. Yeah, it's very tricky. Our our perspectives could be very are very skewed. We don't have a lot of basis to go on because of our dicks. You know, um, we're, we're never going to have to be faced with the situation of like, hey, I could get raped at any second because a guy is drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fucked up. Uh -huh. It's hella fucked up. Okay, um, let's switch gears a little bit. That took a dark twist. Yeah. Rape is bad. We don't condone rape. Don't rape anyone. Harvey Weinstein's a douchebag. 
Bill Cosby's a douchebag. Um, yeah, don't rape people. You know Harvey Weinstein used to be like the product, or like his company was like the production company for Tarantino. Yeah, I did know that. I saw that in the beginning of Pulp Fiction. I was like, oh, that's a Harvey Weinstein movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's possible to distinguish art from artist? Ooh, I have actually never thought about this. Never? I'm glad I'm getting you to start. Because I think about it. I thought, maybe I've thought about it, but it's not constantly on my mind, you know? But then again, you look at, like... Like, I don't... I don't, like... when With Kanye, when he's talking about, like... He idolizes the Trump hat because of for what it means. Well, for me, what it means is all the negative factors associated with Trump and all these fucking bigots that like fucking love him. Like when you get somebody like the KKK loving this motherfucker and and him being publicly being like, hey, there were both there are bad people on both sides, you know, mm -hmm. not denouncing fucking white nationalists, mm -hmm. like just being like they're, they're both bad, mm -hmm. you know. When you have someone like that and you're publicly supporting them, I, I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that at all. And then, but like, you know, I love Kanye West. I love every, I could go on and on about how much of a purist and, a, and an individual that I think Kanye is. And how like troubled in his public image I think he is. But at the end of the day, he still publicly announces his support for Trump. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do you separate that person's mind state from the art that they create like you, you we still like harvey weinstein movies for all these years that we've watched these movies that hollywood was controlled by him he's made all these 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 gorgeous films mm -hmm. and these uh, uh, awarded films that are just like fantastic and make us feel things about ourselves and just you know mm -hmm. really appreciate film but then again this motherfucker was raping people the whole time like how do you separate it I feel like you just can't think about it. Like, you just can't think about it? I feel like it comes up a lot in sports as well. Yeah. Like, take Tiger Woods, for example. Oh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> this is a good one. So, Tiger Woods is probably one of the best golfers of all time. Yeah. It's undisputed. Undisputed. Okay, but his life has been filled with some pretty effed up stuff. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know half of it but the like, only stuff i know is the tight uh, uh the, what south park does on it I, it's just <laughs> oh shit he was like a sex addict yeah like, bro it's bad he had to go to rehab he for had that. to go to rehab for being a sex addict I'm just like okay but like most people don't see tiger woods in that way yeah they're like this is a golfer yeah. a lot of people don't even know that you say hey tiger woods is a sex addict they're like and so, yeah, so what makes him different from Kanye West, then? He golf good. Kanye West sings good. Yep. So, like, what's... What's the difference in, like, what... Do people just focus more on Kanye's... Oh, you, you mean because because of uh, how people don't really focus on uh, on Tiger Woods' past compared to why yeah. they focus on Kanye's past a lot, or his current? I feel because... Tiger Woods' Pat thing was like an issue that he had and he dealt with, mm -hmm. but Kanye West is more of something that is in the public sphere. I feel like if you're not a fan of golf, I mean, you don't really give a fuck about Tiger Woods that much, you know? I guess. If you give a fuck about existence, you know, you kind of care about Kanye West a little bit more just because his wife is like a reality star that like everyone idolizes. And, like, the fact that, like, everybody, like, we can collectively agree his music is fucking great. Like, it's greatness. It's greatness. It's not that good. Oh. Oh, sweet. <laughs> you sweet, sweet soul. I mean, it's okay, but oh some my of his god. albums are just whack. Oh my god. How? How are some of his albums whack? There's some songs where you're just like, this is ear rape. Like, I Am God featuring God. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You see, that's just him being himself. He's just this little crazy being. I, I don't enjoy that. Neither do I. I don't go out of my way to listen to I Am God every fucking two days. <laughs> but do you want to know what I do do? What? I listen to uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and The College Dropout and Graduation constantly. Okay. Because they're fucking amazing. Some songs are good. And Late Registration 
Have you ever heard that song where he took the Adam Levine sample from that one, that Maroon 5 song, and he created, made his own song? Oh, holy shit, Suey. You're just, you can't make generalizations if you're uncultured. I'm not uncultured. You're though. uncultured. You have never heard that song. Just because I haven't heard one Kanye West song doesn't mean I'm uncultured. Have you heard Big Brother? Yes. Have you heard Everything I Met, Maybe Everything I Am? Yes. Have you heard So Appalled? No. Okay. It's cool. I don't know why I'm asking you all these questions. But basically, um, yeah, you're uncultured. <laughs> I'm not, actually. I just am cultured in a different sense. You are. You're cultured. You're not uncultured. You're just miscultured. <laughs> I'm not miscultured. Screw you. I know. You're not. You're not miscultured. That's mean. It's a mean thing to say. But basically, Kanye is my actual fucking god. I love, like, have you listened to Ye? Ye is my most listened to Kanye album. And it's because of how, like, how meaningful it was when it came out. I listened to that shit so much. Have you heard the song, I Thought About Killing Myself? He has a song called, I Thought About Killing Myself. And he goes, the whole, the first, like, two minutes of the song is... Oh, no, 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 I, I, I just thought about killing you. He says, I thought about killing you. And I think about killing myself sometimes, and I love myself way more, more, way more than I love you. But just know, I thought about killing you. <laughs> I contemplated premeditated murder. You want me to play it? Sure. Where's my phone? You got a phone? I got a phone. Play it. Oh, I'll pause it while we get it set up. Well, what'd you think of that? I think I like Kanye because he's so unique. And he doesn't fit what, like, the rap or hip-hop or whatever that kind of stereotype is. He's very profound. So did that change your opinion? I freaking hate the song, though. Okay. I just don't like it. Okay. I, I know what he's trying to do, and I, like, I get that. What do you think he's trying to do? He's, like, just saying whatever comes to mind. And he is doesn't he? care. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, I think you don't give a fuck what anybody says. Okay, for context, we just listened to the song, I Thought About Killing You. And it's quite the experience for the first time listener. I remember I was with my friend Drew, and I showed her it for the first time, and she was like, What the fuck is happening right now? Oh my god. Like, he started screaming. Like, he's just like, it's just such like a beautiful, like, I don't know, would you call that, that sound at the beginning beautiful? No. Why? Because it didn't appeal to my ears. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-
That's a really good song. Really good song. Is that your first time hearing it? Yeah. I think that not only is it appealing to the ear, but it has a good message. What's the message? Well, like, I don't know what the message is, but he's talking about his car crash, and I feel like that's something profound. Yeah, it is, bro. And you don't really hear a lot of that stuff. It's kind of like, oh. Oh, I'm going to shoot someone. I'm going to shoot someone. I'm going to put a cap on you. I'm going to smoke this crack. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much yeah. rap music. I'm going to pop this Xanax. They're basically poisoning me. But no, nah, Kanye's like, he drops this fat beat. What do you think of the beat? Just describe your the, your impression of the beat. Right right when it kicked. Okay. There's that. And then the, the bass, the slight the light bass line in the back. I went immediately to... Pick up the phone, that kind of like... Pick up the phone? The, that kind of beat. Pick it's kind of like an underwater beat, and I think of Ariel. Okay, and, sure. And it's like, it's hard to explain what it's like, like the drums, like there's certain drums where it's like, it makes a sound where you feel like you're an Ariel and you're underwater. Straight up. And you're like all happy and Damn. Sound. Yeah. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, um, like... Jamaican music, and you okay. kind of have that vibe with like the drum where it's like, it's like a, but it's like, it's hard to explain sounds, but. I get it. You kind of feel it. Yeah. So you felt those drums. Yeah. So you tapping your feet along. Yeah. Well. Mm. Yep. Mm. It's a good song. His bars in that song, top notch, <laughs> top notch, and he just he's in the hospital. And he's like fucking recording this. Sure. Like what the fuck? Crazy. It's crazy. It's some good shit. Holy fuck. All right. Well, I don't wanna overcomplicate it. I think we can wrap this up. Come. Um. Favorite favorite Tarantino movie? Go. Pulp Fiction. Easy. Pulp. All right, for sure. Um. Out of him. We didn't even talk about any other fucking Tarantino movie. We'll leave. We'll we'll finish it off. No. With some Django Unchained talk. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll never forget. I watched that movie the first time up here. Uh-huh. And watching it, watching Leo's performance as a fucking slave owner, oh like, holy shit. Like, the fact that he was this malevolent, just fucking cruel, sick, sick being that forced black people to, like, and bet on it to, like, fight and kill each other. Like, that was a real person that Quentin Tarantino wrote into existence. I feel like... Part of the genius with that role is that at the beginning he acted like so nice. Yeah, and then, totally right. And you're like, throughout the movie you kind of get that he's just sick. He's yeah. Pure evil, but you wouldn't think of that when you just meet him for the first time. And if that like, subtle racism, bro, that, I think that's a play on that mm-hmm. right there. Because you meet a nice white lady, she comes off so nice, and she's like, God, I'm not gonna fucking send my kid to school with a bunch of fucking N words. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, you're fucking evil. Yeah. I'm like, keep going though. He was right. I interrupted. Like, like that complexity is part of like what makes Tarantino movies so good is that the characters are like, you wouldn't think like, just by seeing them at first that they're like a certain way. He makes them into these like such complex beings with mm-hmm. weird backstories and. I don't know. I think that's something that's. Really I agree, cool. bro. Yeah. Some flame content. For sure. Have you seen um Inglorious? Oh my god, I was with my grandparents when I, they showed me it. Mm-hmm. They like watch this shit. This was like two years ago, straight mm-hmm. up. Like I, I'm very behind the times on my Tarantino knowledge, mm-hmm. but you know what? I'm getting there. I just watched Kill Bill for the first time, like a couple like. Like a month ago. The whole thing, or just the uh, just the first part. Okay. I'm saving the second part because I know that r- in reality, you people had to wait like a year for, to watch it. Yeah. So I'm giving myself like a month or two in between. Mm-hmm. So I'm like waiting for this next glorious fucking battle. <laughs> I kind of like the first part better than the second. Honestly. Really? You no. Know? Oh, I I don't have any okay, room I, to judge because I, I haven't seen it. But um, Inglorious, bro. Ah. I love that movie. Oh my god. Wow, I think one of the best movies I've seen. That and The Departed are up there. As well as Django, bro. Django, that motherfucker was a superhero. Yeah. And get this, he got shit 
for saying that he enjoyed killing all the white people. How fucked up is that? Yeah. As a black person in America, he literally got shit and, like, had to publicly, like, apologize for saying that he enjoyed killing all of the white people in the movie. <laughs> Think about that for a second. That was a real thing that happened. Yeah. That was a funny-ass SNL monologue. Do you watch SNL? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes? How about modern, currently? No. I always will. I always have watched it, and I always will. Want to know why? My dad. <laughs> My dad grew up with it. Loved it. I love it. I love the people. This is Leslie Jones and Kate McKinnon's, I believe, last seasons. Leslie Jones. Yeah, Leslie Jones is funny as fuck to me, but she always fucked up her lines in this, like, last couple seasons. And I was like, Leslie, come on. Like, you can do better. I feel like the humor is too dry for The me. humor is dry as fuck. I feel like I could be a better writer than some of these fucking skits, bro. Yeah. Straight up. Like, how, do you know how many skits they fucking try out? They, they try out, like, like 20-ish skits, 20, 30 skits. And then they go around, and whichever ones make the, the people laugh the most, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, this is our show now. And, like, that's so bad. Like, some of the skits, like, they go on way too long. That's yeah. the thing about SNL. Seriously. They're so fucking stupid when they go on too long. And I'm just like, come on, next skit, please. Like, I'm fucking done. Like, this is my 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 body can only take this much cancerous humor. <laughs> please stop. Yeah. I love Weekend Update. Weekend Update, without a doubt, always makes me laugh. Michael Che and Colin, they always, their jokes are fucking hilarious. I think they're great comedians. So, and especially their duo together. Especially when they get Pete on. Bro, when you watch a compilation, go home, watch The Departed, and compilations of Pete Davidson <laughs> and Colin Jost. They're fucking gold. Comedy gold. Straight up. Not The Departed. That's not very funny. It's just a great movie. <laughs> but, right. but, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna leave you with. Anybody listening, go listen to watch The Fucking Departed. It's awesome. Cool. And Pete Davidson's a sexy-ass motherfucker. Is he the one that was with Ariana Grande? Yep. Okay. So good. So good. Alright, any uh, departing words for us, Sui? Have you enjoyed this podcast? You know, you think very profoundly. I do. Deep. And it's refreshing, because I never think like this. So, thank you for letting me think deep. It's what I'm here for. Yep. Dab. Dab. For sure. Well... Thank you for joining me again. Yep. I hope to have you on soon again. Uh-huh. Cool. Say hello to your mother for me. <laughs>